My name is Tammy. Thank you so much for braving the weather and COVID to see our performance. Forgive me for reading from a piece of paper, but I don't want to miss anyone because it took so many people to get this production, be it just two castmates together. Um, first off, please join me in thanking Barb Bauer. Barb! <laughs> she is the artist of these amazing Roscoe S. paintings right here. She physically painted those just for us, for our set, so thank you so much. That means a lot to me. More than welcome. Hmm? Oh, my, my pleasure. Yes. And then this large frame directly behind me was built by my dear friend and theater lover, Dan Wyatt. I'd also like to thank John Simon, handsome John back there, for taking time out of his busy schedule. Yeah, let's give him a call. Because he has taken time out of his busy schedule to record our production. And my hope is to post this on the Accidental Actors YouTube channel to share with those unable to attend our performance. And finally, I would like to extend a huge thank you to Jonathan and Jacob of Spencer Pride for allowing us use of this wonderful stage space. Right. Because of their generous support during these restrictive times, we are able to offer you a sense of normality through live theater, be it from a distance. Now about the play, Rothko, Mark Rothko was an important American abstract expressionist, best known as one of the pioneers of the color field painting movement. A style of painting that emerged from the New York art scene in the 40s and 50s depicting grand blocks of color, just like you see on these paintings. The play Red is about a pivotal moment in the latter years of Rothko's career. Set in the late 1950s and based on real events, Red takes a compelling look at the ever-changing relationship between an artist and his creations and the endurance of art. Accidental Actors is proud to present the play Red written by John Logan and starring Mark Rogers and Jeremiah Freeman.
to meet it halfway, for God's sakes. Lean forward, lean into it, engage with it. Now, you see. Wait, wait, wait. Now, what you see, be specific, no, be exact. Be exact, but sensitive. You understand? Be kind. Be a human being is all I can say. Be a human being for the first time in your life. These pictures demand compassion. They live or die in the eye of the sensitive viewer. They quicken only if the empathetic viewer will let them. That's what they call out for. That's why they were created. That's what they deserve. What do you see? Red. But do you like it? Mm -hmm. Speak up. Yes. Well, of course you like it. How could you not like it? Everyone likes everything nowadays. They like their television. They like their photograph. They like their shampoo, their soda pop. They like the Cracker Jacks. Everything becomes everything else. And all turns nice and pretty and likable. But where's the discernment? The arbitration that separates what I like from what I respect, what I deem worthy. What has, and listen to me now, significance? This may be a dinosaur talking. Maybe speaking a lost language unknown to your generation, but any generation that does not aspire to seriousness, to meaning, doesn't deserve to walk in the shadow of those who've gone before. I mean those who have struggled and surmounted. I mean those who have aspired. I mean Rembrandt. I mean Turner. I mean Michelangelo and Matisse. I mean, obviously, Rothko. Do you aspire? Yes. To what? Uh, I want to be a painter, so uh, I guess I aspire to painting. <laughs> Those clothes won't do, then. <laughs> I appreciate that you wore your Sunday best to impress me. It's poignant. I'm touched, but it's ridiculous. We work hard here. Hang up your jacket. This isn't some goddamn old world salon with tea cakes and lemonade. Hang up your jacket. Sydney told you what I need here? Yes. You'll help me stretch the canvases, build the stretchers, mix the paint, move the paintings, clean the brushes. We start at nine, we go to a five, just like bankers. Anything I need, any whim, cigarettes, food, no matter how demanding or demeaning. If you don't like that, leave now. So answer me, yes or no? Yes. Consider, I'm not your rabbi, I'm not your father, I'm not your shrink, I'm not your friend, I'm not your teacher. I'm your employer, you understand? Yes. As my assistant, you'll see many things here, many ingenious things. They're all secret. You can't talk to anyone about this. Don't think I don't have enemies, because I do. And I don't just mean the other painters and gallery owners and museum curators and goddamn son of a bitch art critics. <laughs> Not to mention the vast panoply of disgruntled viewers who loathe me and my work. They don't have the heart. They don't have the patience. They don't have the capacity to think, to understand, because they're not real human beings, like we talked about here, remember? Yes. I'm working on a set of murals. I'll probably do 30 or 40, see which ones work best in concert, like a fugue.
you'll help me lay down the ground cover and then I'll paint and then I'll study them and then I'll paint some more. I do a lot of layers, one after another, like a glaze, slowly building the image like pentimento, letting the luminescence emerge until they're done. How do you know when they're done? Ah, there's tragedy in every brushstroke. Oh. You want a drink? Uh, sure. Answer me a question. Don't think about it. First thing that comes into your head, no cognition. Uh, okay. You ready? Yes. Who's your favorite painter? Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Ask me again. Mm -hmm. oh, come on. No, it's silly. Come on, ask me again. Who's your favorite painter? Picasso. Ah, Pollock. It's always Pollock. Don't get me wrong, he was a great painter. We came up together, I knew him well. What was he like? Have you read Nietzsche? What? You call yourself an artist? One cannot discuss Pollock without it. One cannot discuss anything without it. What did he teach you in art school now? Did you read Freud? You? Who? Byron, Wordsworth, Aeschylus, Turgenev, Sophocles, Schopenhauer, Shakespeare, Hamlet. Dear God, at least Hamlet. Quote Hamlet for me right now. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> is that the question? You have a lot to learn, young man. Philosophy, theology, literature, drama, poetry, history, archaeology, anthropology, mythology, music. These are your tools as much as paint and canvas. You cannot become an artist until you become civilized. You can't become civilized until you learn. To become civilized is to understand where you fall on the compendium of your work and your world. To surmount the past, you must know the past. I thought you weren't my teacher. <laughs> you should be so blessed I talk to you about art. How do you feel? How do I feel? How do they make you feel? Give me a second. So? Give me a second. Disquieted. And? Thoughtful. And? Sad. Tragic? Yeah. They're for a restaurant. What? <laughs> They're for a restaurant. So I'm minding my own business. Mr. Philip Johnson calls me. You know Mr. Philip Johnson, the world-renowned architect? Not personally. Well, of course you don't know him personally. You don't know anyone personally. Don't interrupt. Mr. Philip Johnson calls me. He's designing the new Seagram building on Park Avenue. He and Mies van der Rohe. These are names with which to conjure, are they not? Philip Johnson and Mies van der Rohe. Titans of their field, revolutionists. Together they're designing a building, the type of which the world has never seen, reflecting the golden ambitions of not 
just this city and its inhabitants, but of all mankind. And in that building will be a restaurant called the Four Seasons, like Vivaldi. And on the walls of that restaurant, my first murals, $35,000 they're paying me. No other painter comes close. Imagine a freeze all around the room, a continuous narrative filling the walls, one to another, each its own chapter, the story unfolding. Look, and it is there, inescapable, inexorable, like doom. Are these ones done? They're in process. I still have to study them. Study them? Most of painting is thinking. Didn't they teach you that? 10% is putting paint on the canvas. The rest is thinking. All my life, I've wanted just this, my friend. To create a place, a place where the viewer can live in contemplation with the work and give it some of the same attention and care that I gave it. Like a chapel, a place of communion. But, but it's a restaurant. No, I will make it a temple.